Welcome to this talk and uh, welcome back to Professor Robert Clancy from Australia. Professor, thank you so much for coming back on. Well, thank you very much, John, for having me. Now, we want to do an update because a lot of people are uh, unhappy about the safety of COVID vaccines, which is one issue. But today I want to focus on the efficacy of COVID vaccines. Now, there's some data been published that shows that COVID vaccines might not be helpful in preventing hospitalizations, but actually causing more hospitalizations. Is this true and does it make any theoretical sense? It's a very good question, John, and I think it's a, an issue that we've really neglected. We, we often talk uh, about the many adverse events of uh, messenger RNA vaccines, but uh, what has been neglected is what in fact has happened in, in real life. A and this is not a surprise. Uh, this is something that should have been predicted right at the beginning. Uh, it was something that happened with influenza. Uh, it was shown that if you uh, vaccinate a person with influenza and use the same vaccine 12 months later, the amount of immune response is about 20, 25% less than you got the year before. In other words, this whole business of down-regulating and suppressing, turning off immunity by too many vaccines combined with exposure in the environment to the COVID virus uh, was predictably going to cause what we're now seeing today. So we've kind of got a double exposure now. We've got a lot of people still getting these vaccines and we've got regular exposure to the COVID antigen. How, so how is the immune system reacting to that? And, and what, 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 why, what's this whole idea of negative immunity? How, how is it occurring on a physiological basis? Well, well there's been a lot of talk uh, in, around the topic of negative immunity. And I think uh, people mustn't be surprised. There's all sorts of comments uh, that would suggest Oh dear me, you know, we're, we're getting more infections, not less. You know, vaccines are supposed to prevent, not promote uh, infection. You need to understand uh, the reasons for this. The COVID virus is an inhaled virus. It's not one that gets into the bloodstream uh, as part of its natural uh, pathogenesis. It actually is breathed in and handled by a system we've talked about before, the local mucosal immune system. And the key part and the elephant in the room with mucosal immunology is the fact that it is a very balanced type of immune response and requires to have mechanisms to turn off the immune response so you don't get an exaggerated inflammatory response to every virus and every pollen and everything else that you breathe in. This is quite different to the immune system that's operating in the bloodstream, which is geared to sterility. The bloodstream immunology system is aimed at neutralizing every virus particle, because otherwise uh, you have a system that could be overwhelming and lethal very quickly. So we've got this system, so we know. now. If you uh, keep getting a particular virus, and remember the patients who are, all of us who are getting COVID from time to time have been getting the parent virus, the coronavirus, yeah. probably all our lives. So in other words, the body's been sensitized basically to the coronavirus. And so when you get a vaccine which can comprises part of that virus, the spike protein, then you're not essentially immunising in a totally naive way. And so the response you get is not just a good positive response, although initially you will get a positive response, but as experience goes and as you get more exposure to the virus in the environment and as you get more of these booster vaccines, particularly after about three of them in a year or two, you actually get a net turn off rather than a net turn on. So instead of getting terrifically vigorous immune response, which uh, initially when the vaccine rollout occurred, there was a very good protective immune response. But progressively, that immune response has become less and less, which means that there's less and less uh, protection from the, um, uh, from the uh, vaccine. And 
the dynamic that needs to be understood, John, is a dynamic that involves three components. The first component is the virus itself. And the virus is changing. Uh, every six months or so, we get a new variant. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the second variant is the vaccine virus, the virus they put in the vaccine. And uh, despite the warp speed nature of making these viruses, they're always lagging behind. In other words, when a new vaccine comes out, it's usually two, well, very often up to two major virus changes away <laughs> from the virus that's in the community. And the third variable, and this is the one that uh, has not understood and hardly ever discussed, and yet it's so important, is the population's resilience and response, the population's immunity. And so what you've got is two major things happening. You've got vaccines continually being given and continually driving down the immune response, while at the same time, it's lagging behind the virus that's prevalent in the community. And so when you put these two things together, the actual protection becomes progressively less, which is called negative immunity. Now, interestingly, John, I think this the first time I saw this, although I, it didn't surprise me, was in, in England. And you might remember way back in 2022, it seems like a, an eon ago, doesn't it? Yeah. 2022. Uh, but in 2022, you might, uh, you'll remember that the British government used to publish uh, the protection rates of the vaccine and yeah. what was happening, I think, basically every week. They, then all of a sudden, negative immunity started appearing and at the same time, so did the reports of what was going on. So the, the authorities have known about this for three years. Yeah, they, they just stopped, have... stopped reporting it. They stopped reporting it. And the same occurred in my own state of New South Wales. Uh, when suddenly uh, most of the people in hospital uh, were the vaccinated people as opposed to the unvaccinated. Um, and all of a sudden our, our reporting uh, stopped. So we have this system that um, each time a new vaccine comes out, someone will do a two month, maybe three month study and show compared with the 80% protection against hospitalisation and even death in the when, when the rollout occurred back in 2021, um, they get something like 30 or 40% protection. But they only look at it for two months. And uh, have you got that graph up, John? Or yeah, I have. Up? Just, before, just before we do that, Robert, why was it that the vaccine in the early days in Australia did seem to be effective? In fact, was effective at preventing hospitalizations? Right, well, I, I think two things need to be, be stated. The first is that uh, in Australia, we didn't see COVID virus for the well into uh, 2021 uh, because we had lockdowns and we had uh, closure of the country. We're an isolated country and by closing the borders, uh, we had a, a big impact on the virus coming. So when the vaccine came out, as opposed to England, where something like two thirds of the deaths from COVID were already over by the time um, the vaccine came out. Uh, so the vaccine was, uh, and as we were talking about the, the fact that the vaccine, uh, uh, they were getting negative immunity by 2022. Uh, so you'd already been highly sensitized. We hadn't. Mm -hmm. So up till the early 2022, in other words, a year or so after they brought out the vaccine, uh, Australians were getting very good levels of protection, uh, over 80%. Uh, which was terrific, uh, and that was great. But then the reality is that when people looked at that, they thought this was great. Uh, and as a result of that, um, the data they obtained back then is still being used today <laughs> in Australia to recommend going to have uh, more vaccinations. Look how good the vaccination is way yeah. back. But of course, as we'll get on to this in a, a minute or two, um, the world has changed, the people have changed, we've become a very, we're no longer uh, naive with respect to the immune response uh, to, to the virus. Uh, but going back to that time back in 2022, uh, there were three big studies done, really important studies, which said, let's not just look at COVID 
uh, immunity and protection against hospitalisation or death. That's important, but let's balance that against the adverse events. And in each of those three studies, when they look at the, the, the dangers and toxicity of the vaccine against its benefits, which were, were real, um, the three studies all concluded that the net benefit was negative, that, that there were more problems from the vaccine than benefits from having the vaccine. Now, um, th that's data that's all published. Mm. So, um, if so we ba basically, move... that, that 80% protection was on a completely SARS coronavirus to naive population. Exactly. And, and, exactly. And that, and that, so you would expect some benefit there. Actually, interestingly, the vaccines were first sold to us, if you like, as, as protecting uh, against infection. And then, exactly. and then the owners, when they realised it didn't do that, the owners changed from, oh, no, 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 it protects against hospitalisation. And, and they used information there from a completely naive population. Another way to look at it for this 80% protection is you could say that you didn't give natural immunity a chance in Australia would be a, yeah. another way to look at it. But that 80% that worked on a completely naive population is no way going to be in any way, way applicable now. And, uh, and the viruses That's have true. changed. It's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a bit... It's, in, in fairness to the whole show, John, we can go back to 2021, you know, the year when they first brought out, rolled out the vaccine. And um, the studies that showed uh, the balance between toxicity and benefit, um, I'm sure can be argued both ways. And it may, I wouldn't for a moment say there weren't people who benefited significantly from uh, the vaccine, just as other people did not. But um, that argument is now three years out of date. Yeah. And now we've got to look at 2025. Yeah. And, and there's nothing special. In fact, we may come back to why the messenger RNA vaccine may be particularly damaging in this effect in yeah. terms of uh, increasing the uh, incidence of infection compared with, say, a traditional um, antigen vaccine or even the DNA vaccines that uh, came out at the same time as the messenger RNA ones. Uh, we may come back to that. But um, so... I should have mentioned that that's another factor that we need to to put into this particular equation. Yeah, and I would also argue that we probably don't know all the adverse reactions that we're going to get yet either. There could be some more well, still that, to, that, still to I mean, raise their ugly heads. Just before we uh, uh, we started this video, John and I were talking about some conditions I have never seen in 50 years of clinical medicine. Um, uh, as as uh, vaccine-induced uh, abnormalities.